Thanks, Justine. Hi, everyone. So I'm going to just summarize a few of our kind of main discussion um, points in our group that was moderated by Danielle. So we had about eight or nine participants um, across NGOs. Um, we had some of the government of Nigeria um, and the CSP as well. Um, so we didn't necessarily follow the questions as such, but we had quite a bit of discussion around um, sort of the benefits of large scale infrastructure wash improvements um, and, and those being very well known and clear, but many questions um, remain about how to deliver wash in emergency settings and, and different contexts. So really focusing on the need to prioritize research questions related to implementation of wash interventions in different contexts, how do you scale up? Um, and also what is the cost effectiveness of these interventions? Um, we then had quite a bit of discussion around um, hygiene and behavior change. And, and this also been a priority of research given that behaviors are hard to change and sustain. And we know from the research and evidence there, uh, that's out there that it's not just about delivering the kit or the package. Um, it's the training that goes alongside it, the ongoing support, the monitoring, um, and so we need to see it kind of more as a comprehensive package and how can we uh, better understand how those behaviors can be sustained. And um, I think there's some learning from some of the IPC practices in low-income countries that can be, be shared around this. Um, and then, yeah, we just kind of finally, finally talked about, you know, the benefits of WASH um, are very much clear, um, but it's the political priority of WASH that's often lower. So we need to be cleverer and smarter about how we communicate the WASH benefits, not just for cholera, but um, to talk about the broader benefits of WASH on uh, different diseases, but also related to kind of other benefits around dignity, sort of gender, um, economic impacts. Um, so I think that was kind of the main um, sort of cusp of our discussion. But if anyone else from the group would like to jump in or Danielle, if there's anything I've missed, please do, do say. Thank you. Thanks, great. Megan. Thank you. Danielle? Oh, I was just going to say that was a great summary and thank you. So we can move to Kyla for group two. Yeah, great. Uh, so we similarly had a group of about, I think, eight or nine participants and a great range of people that have been um, actively involved in some of the research we heard about today, but also some additional um, research in different countries, um, as well as um, funders and implementers. So it's sort of an interesting uh, mix of perspectives as well. Um, we heard about a few um, additional pieces of research that will be either starting or, or, or moving on further as, as some of them were delayed over the past year due to COVID. Um, some of which we've heard about today with the intervention with LSHTM and MSF, um, but also some new uh, or continuing work, maybe new and continuing work um, in Kalimi DRC, uh, looking at the role of lakes in uh, transmission, as uh, there's been a series of outbreaks there and so rather than waiting for the next outbreak, they're looking at some of the historical data um, and then um, looking to identify hotspots and study the elements of transmission in those uh, hotspots. And that they're in the study phase for that. Uh, we also heard about some research that's um, starting up in Nepal um, in partnership with the Vaccine Institute in Korea. And they're working with uh, Nepal and their NCP and starting some surveillance in Nepal um, to obtain baseline information on incidents and prevalence of cholera in Nepal. But also there will be additional projects, including one on uh, a CADI project with vaccination and wash in greater Kathmandu, I believe. Um, and that's to sort of take off more in the coming year. Um, and they're also doing a, um, collecting samples, blood samples of class 70 clusters, I believe, of uh, randomly selected individuals across the country um, to then also try and do some hotspot analysis uh, with data. And so that's, I think, not yet started, but something that they're looking and partnering with the government of Nepal um, to do as well. Um, and then I think some interesting sort of just support on um, working with the GTFCC on how we continue to build um, sort of knowledge um, 
and disseminations. I think that really links well with what we're doing um, here and some of the work that we can continue to do through linking up the working groups and with external um, partners on, on the research and the knowledge that's, you know, the rich knowledge that's coming across in this um, webinar, but also that will continue to come out through the coming year. And then I think just in terms, we, we didn't quite manage to get to each of the questions, but we did um, start to highlight which questions we thought were we would prioritize in terms of research. And one was around the multi-sectoral research priorities as we are seeing today, just how much um, learning we can take across different areas and understanding you know, what is the optimal WASH package, how, that, how can it be added to OCV campaigns, how do we, um, second priority was around targeting specific groups, looking at the CADI approach or a questionnaire to, to see you know, high risk areas and a quick evaluation of what those main transmission routes are so that we can address those um, in an emergency situation. And um, I think just a general comment was around how much, you're just pleased to see all of the research that's been done in cholera interventions. Um, and some of the work that was presented today. And also that um, with the sort of increasing amount of cholera data we now have, um, seems like an optimal time to, to look at wash coverage versus cholera data and to, to really address that sort of is seen as a gap um, within our group. And um, I think, yeah, just reiterating the, the wash package accompanying OCV campaigns, that seems like sort of an immediate a quick question that can be looked at and addressed. Um, but, but then I think the last point um, raised in our group before we, we, we got brought back was just that there is still sort of um, an important gap on the comprehensive interventions in the long term. So really understanding what is the most sort of appropriate and holistic approach of WASH um, to address cholera. I'll stop there. Is there. Lauren, did you want to add anything? or anyone else from the group two, like group two? And nothing from me, Kyla. Thanks so much for rough touring in the summary. Thanks everybody in group two. Uh, now we'll hand over to Helen for the last report from group three. Hi, thanks Justine. Yeah, so we had a, we had a great discussion. There was about 12 of us in the group. I think it was quite, uh, it had a lot of experience in the implementing side of things and less in the research. So that was great. We ended up having a really interesting discussion about re the research priorities going forward and some gaps. Uh, so we started off our, and I'm on a little topic of conversation about how there's a lot in the research priorities and there's a lot of research being done on the water and uh, water and hygiene side of things. And perhaps there needs to be more focus and more questions being generated and more research being developed on the sanitation side of things. Um, that led, led us into a discussion about um, the important, uh, essentially a gap that the research agenda has, which is because of when it was developed at the time, which is all about how can we link up with COVID-19 and the WASH interventions that have been um, that have been implemented in the different countries. Um, how can we learn what worked for COVID and what didn't work? How can we then make sure that any benefits and gains we've taken from COVID-19's WASH interventions are carried forward to continually benefit other infectious diseases? And of course, and somebody pointed out that it was a great point, it's a great messaging also for cholera is to say that these things that we're, we're trying to get people to do, these wash interventions, they have benefits beyond just cholera as well. So it's quite, it's very cyclical. Um, and then another where research priority or sort of topic of research that people feel should be prioritized is community engagement, embedding that as a core component of both designing and evaluating WASH interventions and about how valuable that is. Then um, there was a great point about, you know, operational research, implementation research, embedding research within programs is there's so many opportunities there and it's just not really being done, um, but it's not so difficult to carry out um, and gather a lot of evidence in these large programs. Um, but the key thing is that we need to do this in lots of different contexts and Chobi 17 and Pitcher, these are great examples of how we can take the same idea, but then tailor it to the different communities, their barriers, their um, facilitators. Uh, so that was uh, another one about can we make a priority to collaborate with implementing actors during their programs. And then one final priority that we discussed was again a little bit about that I think has been brought before, what really is the optimal 
uh, wash intervention kit, particularly what's the optimal hygiene kit? What do we need for effectiveness going forward? So that was, uh, I would say, the, the summary of our conversation. Uh, would Christine Marie or anyone else like to add anything in? Well, you covered it beautifully. Thank you, Helen. <laughs> Helen, you did a great job. Thanks a lot. It was a great session.